13 years ago, a tall young man from Pennsylvania by way of Alaska would find his way to Lima, Ohio. With a passion for sports, but an even bigger passion for Christ, Andy Lynch would discover the one-of-a-kind opportunity to unite both right here at TV44. It was the program Sports Report that brought him here, or maybe that was just the tool God used to infiltrate Andy into Northwest Ohio. So many of you have been part of Andy's time here at TV44. Maybe you're one of the thousands of individuals who have been interviewed. Maybe he's covered your son or daughter's sporting events. Maybe his actions and words had an impact, changed your life of your grandchildren, or maybe those words impacted you when he spoke in your church. As God moves the Lynch family to another assignment, we take a look at all God has done here with Andy committing to being the hands and feet of Jesus right here in Northwest Ohio. So Andy Lynch, let us jump back to the beginning. Oh man. 13 years ago, you're the same height. I think I was. Maybe a little thinner. <laughs> Maybe, what are you saying, younger. Jennifer? What are you saying? <laughs> it feels like 50 years ago, honestly. Oh my goodness. It feels like 50. we've lived so many lifetimes in 13 years with all the things that have happened that God has done. So let's jump back there. Let's go back to the beginning, 13 mm. years ago. Um, You'd been in Ohio, but just for a short period of time because right. you came from Alaska. You knew that God was moving you into a different direction, and suddenly you're here in Lima, Ohio. Yeah, and it was on my birthday that I skipped work. I was working for Athletes in Action, and I had proposed to Leah early that morning. So that's how we started my birthday, May 10th, would have been 2005. And so we were going to go to the Reds game later on that day. She had a big, you know, plan for, for my birthday celebration, first time I'd been to Great American Ballpark. And so I skipped work because we had been up all night, you know, proposing. I proposed during the middle of the night because that's what oh, I Oh yeah, did. folks, that, that's a whole that's other story. story. We don't have time for it, but if you ever have a chance, <laughs> please ask him that story. It's a great it, story. It's great. It is. And, and so instead of working, I'm sitting at home and I go on tvjobs.com. I'd been out of TV for five months and missed it. Mm -hmm. And this t station in Lima, Ohio, that was an independent Christian TV mm -hmm. station, said they're starting a sports show and they want it to be used for the gospel. And so I applied that day. The next day, I think I emailed our general manager, Kevin Bowers, and heard back from him and then Joe Wassing shortly after that and drove up for an interview maybe the next week. And I remember coming up, Joe brought me up to Brees Road and I remember seeing Crytersville and I'm like, that's an interesting name for a town. And Wapakoneta, and we came back Brees Road, or it was just me, I was by myself and parked, I got here early, went to the Speedway right down the road from the station, mm -hmm. went to the QP hamburger, didn't go. I was like, that's kind of an interesting place. There's a QP doll on the outside. <laughs> and then I spent you know, my time here uh, with Joe, with Kevin, Jeff Milslegel. I kind of interviewed with each of them. Uh, they'd heard from, I was, I was from Alaska, and so Jeff Klingler had to meet me because he's always, <laughs> I think he's always wanted to go to Alaska. And they told me about this show they were starting and how it was, an outreach you know we want to do sports we want to cover it well we've broadcast games before um wow look at that and there you are <laughs> there you are now that doesn't take us that's not all the that way that doesn't back. go all the way back yeah. so it could be even further back but you know in the world of television it's common for a person to stay around somewhere for a couple of years yeah and then they move up and they move into a bigger location uh, hey there's mark, mark without, with, a beard. without a beard look <laughs> at that but 13 years ago yeah. you came here and in that first year did things change did you realize this is different the first year was weird because it was justin weinerman a lima shawnee mm -hmm. guy uh darren lozier delphi st john's he had been here for a full year justin and i were coming on at the same time and then Tom Narker, uh, an LCC mm -hmm. guy. So we had three like Allen County guys, mm -hmm. and then this tall guy from Alaska. <laughs> what, what's, I was the wild card. <laughs> Nobody really knew what to make of me. And, and I, I had done this Andy's antics, and I'm sure we'll talk about that later in mm -hmm. Alaska. And I remember driving up with Leah, uh, my fiance at the time, now wife, and I said, I wonder if that'll work here. You know, I wonder, you know, people for some reason were drawn to whatever I did in Alaska. Maybe that's just because it was Alaska. <laughs> And I did weird stuff, and I made a fool of myself, and people liked it. Will that really work here? And so I, I didn't know. And that first year, we had so, oh, here we go. Yeah, there we <laughs> pole go. Pole vaulting is, so here's I, got, the main <laughs> I left the ground. That's the important part. I got off the ground. I loved pole vaulting. I think I did this antic so explain, three or four times. Explain what Andy's antics is okay. to people who are, are watching you. This is what I call flat vaulting. Yeah. I got off the ground, Jennifer. <laughs> Volleyball is okay at 
Oh, that, wow, I was big. Uh, uh, <laughs> kind of in the net right there. Yeah, yeah that was it. Yeah, bad. but I bet you'd be good at spiking. Oh, man. That was with the power team when they came. So Andy's antics. Yes. A great opportunity for you to experience what these other people are doing and attempt to do it yourself. And like I said, I started in Alaska because I wanted good to- Good job. You got you. the whole thing. Well, they, they rigged it for me, so oh. it, was, it was very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a trick to it, I guess. I don't remember it, but I, there was one. So I started in Alaska because I wanted to try, you know, sled dog racing and salmon fishing and yeah. all these Alaskan experiences. And I was a poor journalist and wasn't going to pay for it. And so I, I proposed to my station folks there, let me try this once a week. I'll go and try different things. And it was such an awesome way to com connect with people in things they love, mm. especially mm -hmm. up there where it's unique what they love. And not a lot of people love it, you know, like they do. And so, so, so how was it? how was it accepted here? Right. You brought the idea right. here, and how did you see it embraced? Right, it was embraced completely because, again, I was doing things people love. Track and field is an awesome sport. There's so many different disciplines to it, but it, it's never gotten a ton of TV coverage mm -hmm. here or across the country. I always used to make a joke to Kyle Pullman, who was one of our uh, great videographers who did so many different things for us, that we'd go to a track meet in the spring, and we'd broadcast all the finals, and I'd say, I'm joined by Kyle Pullman, the best videographer of track and field in the entire country. <laughs> and I would say on the air, that's true because we're the only ones doing this. And then Nick Fraley, who's upstairs right now, he, he took over that mantle. And Joe Vernick, he took over that mantle. These guys, are, we're doing nothing, nothing anyone else does. Well, and that was and one I, of I was able to connect with people that are in those sports. And what a unique thing. So year one happens. We move into year two. Yeah. which You can talk about the just changes. Spring sports, fall sports. Right. It wasn't just football basketball, it was every sport. Right. Every sport, track and field, swimming, everything Bowling, was a part tennis, of this. Bowling, tennis, cross country, baseball, softball, name it all. And, and it was really that first spring that made the difference because we were getting to know coaches that are football coaches in the fall and they help out with track and field in the spring. We were able to build those relationships and talk to the kids. You'd win a race, you'd win the 100 at the MAC championships and I'd go over and talk to you right after you won that 100. You don't do that in football. You don't talk to the players after they score a touchdown, but in track and field, in baseball, guy gets a hit and you go, hey, who's that guy? Let me write down their name. And we made these amazing connections with people that first year. And then there, we had some turnover going into the second year, but we brought in Mark Kuntz, uh, who was with us for a decade. And just did, he was such a steady presence. I knew he'd always be here, you know, working on something because Mark was a hard worker. And so he was, Kind of, you know, me, me and him, we worked together so well. And then we had, a, Darren was still there for a little bit. Adam Kohler we hired, who was just a, a bright, you know, budding journalist. Only had him for a year, but he, he really brought professionalism to the station and did things really well. Brant Showalter, he fit in here. You know, he's an Indiana guy, came over to Ohio, and he just got it. And, and he loved the things we loved. Um, and so that was really, really cool to have him along. And then guys like Chris Parks and Garrett Seawright and Matt Finkel would come along and I was thinking about this this week because I've been doing some leadership courses, John Maxwell's 21 Laws of Leadership, How Do We Lead? And, and looking back, I didn't even realize I was doing some of these laws of leadership, mm -hmm. but we had a, a focus. You know, our focus was to get to as many games and talk with as many kids and as many coaches as we could. That was it. We, you know, we only got a few highlights from some things. We'd show up to a baseball game and get the last three pitches sometimes to end the game. That's not great highlights. That's not great TV. <laughs> But to them, we were there, we mm -hmm. were connecting with them, we were showing them on TV, we were getting to know them, and then on TV we'd tell the story of their lives. we get to know, by the end of baseball season, you know, who these people were and, and could share their stories with people. So are you telling me that Sports Report and sports in general and what you've done here at TV44, it's about sports, but it's about relationships. Yeah. And why, why has it been so important to be able to buy, create those relationships? Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't have buy-in for, number one, what we do. Uh, we, we wouldn't have grown TV44 sports coverage and viewership without those relationships. We'd just be another sports show. And so people had to know we cared about them. We cared about their communities. When there was a death in the community, which happened way too often over the last 13 years, you know, we were there offering prayers and, and sometimes going you know, to, to help out however we can. Um, we really did care. And, and that's because God cares for us. And as we are his children, we're to care for others. And so it was a direct, you know, it's how the gospel is supposed to be lived out. Yeah, it's, it's a ministry unlike anything I've ever seen yeah. before, having worked in secular TV and mm -hmm. all of that, and to come here and recognize the ability, because every time you walked on that field or every time you walked in a school, 
you brought Jesus there with you. Yeah. And that was part of what you have done as you talked with those kids, as yeah. you retweeted their tweets. There is a, a deeper purpose behind it all. Yeah, and they, they, it's cool that they understood it. You know, this, this last week or whatever month, you know, I've just asked God to do it one more time, to show up one more time, and to do something through me, through us, through the station, just one more time so I can, I can say thanks to him. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Well, let's, uh, we talked a little bit about Andy's antics and uh, how funny and fun those were. <laughs> um, and, and I enjoyed this past week looking back on years of Andy's antics and seeing some of the different things. I watched one where you were um, conducting the Holiday Music Festival. Oh, that's right. You, okay, was you, that Wapakoneta? You also were- Because I sang with Kaleida. You were in, yeah, we have the video, so we'll see okay. if we can get, we get here I it comes. I, and th this intro was done, well, the video was done by Trent Cox, but the, the music, which I don't know if we're hearing, was done by my friends Dave and Brian, who are like Christian comedians okay. that do spoofs. Oh, wow. Now you can see how old this video is. It's, it's small, it's square, it's SD, but there you are. And then I was directing myself. You were directing yourself. That looks like Delphi St. John's, maybe? No, Waynesfield, WG. And I'm texting during. Oop. I think you're taking a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Where did we film this part? I don't remember a blue curtain, do you? Well, yeah, yeah, we, did had, we, have a we blue had a blue curtain here okay. in the studio. Um, see, so many things have happened I do in 13 not remember years, this. you don't even remember some no. of this stuff. And those students there that are in that picture are what, like 27 now? <laughs> Something like that? Who I gave me that wig? Just some of the crazy <laughs> things that you have been able to do and, and, over here. And honestly, here. it was harder because in Alaska, it's easy to find crazy, right? <laughs> Everything's crazy that I tried. Here, you know, I'd go to the track and field, and so our spring antics would be today, this is the pole vault. This time, it's the high jump. Gray Horn, who, of course, had the Olympic trial, was third, almost made the Olympics, but just didn't have uh, the decathlon qualifying score several years ago. I competed against him in the decathlon. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it was modified. So <laughs> but, you know, you, you just found things. And what was important wasn't what I was doing. What was important was the people I was doing it with. And they really appreciated that I was willing to, to try something and, you know, make a fool of myself most times. So all of this started <laughs> out for a show called Sports Report. And then little by little, it turned it into an entire channel. Yeah. The next thing you knew, WOSN was being created. And, and I... I don't think I knew that it would work. You know, Kevin Bowers and Joe Wass, I think, they, I think it was their kind of dream, maybe even before I got here. And I, I wondered if in this area it would work. I knew sports, people love sports, and so to me it made sense that, okay, we'll show full games. You know, we'll show 350 games per year, and we'll have content in between. And we had a, some talk shows, you know, Buckeye Insider was big, and Mark had all the different Buckeye content. So there was, there was definitely content there, but are people really going to watch? And, and are our businesses really going to jump on board to the level we need them to? A full TV channel right. that's all sports. Right. And our hope is as much local sports as possible. Exactly, to sustain that. And, and, and you know, Zach Bowers and I kind of, we figured it out. We walked mm -hmm. through it and with Kevin's leadership as well. Um, and to me, as I look back, it's, I remember sitting in my basement playing, I was an antisocial, you know, high school kid. <laughs> And I'd come home from basketball practice, and I'd sit here with my 13-inch TV playing Sega Genesis video games, broadcasting my game <laughs> on this TV, the big 27-inch, and that was huge, <laughs> box TV. I'd have sports here. And my mom tells me still, she told me that this week to this day, I remember listening at the top of the stairs to you broadcast and thinking, God's going to do something with that. <laughs> and I'd pretend to have my own station. Isn't that funny that I would pretend that... Okay, right now my, my e game, which we now have eSports on some TVs, not on WSN. I don't think we're going there. But my you know, that was part of the my TV station. Then Brady Bunch would come on at 4 30, because I love Brady Bunch. And then, you know, there'd be Saved by the Bell, you know, these shows that I grew up watching, and I was programming my own channel. And then fast forward 15, 20 years, and I'm literally doing my own channel. And and there's a song that i I listened to right out of college from by a band called Cadet. A terrible Christian, not terrible, a, a small Christian band that had two songs, kind of like uh, California surf music, that type of thing. I liked all kinds of Christian music. And one of their songs, the, the lyrics were, you made a dream and you gave it to me, a dream only God could have made. And that's, that's my life. You know, he made this dream, he birthed it in me in high school, and I, I had no idea that he would make it possible, and he has, through TV44. 
He was starting you, he was preparing you. I mean, yeah. he does that for all of us. He, he bursts that dream in us mm -hmm. and then gives us the skills and we may not do it to all those years later. And then Andy sits there one day with WSN going, yeah. wow, God, right? wow. Yeah. You know, so much of what you have done here is sports, mm -hmm. but God has been leading all of it because in every single aspect of every sporting thing you've done, whether it has been specifically ministry focused or not, there's been a ministry aspect behind all of it. And that's what we're supposed to do as followers of Jesus. What, whatever he has done in our lives, whatever giftedness he has given us, we need to use that for the gospel. That's what Paul was a tent maker. And I'm sure when he was making tents for people, and mm -hmm. he was talking about Jesus and all the, the fishermen when they were out, you know, fishing before Jesus, you know, officially called them into this full-time ministry, you know, that's part of their ministry. Whatever you are doing, whatever your giftedness is, whatever your circle is, God has a plan to use that for his kingdom. And just so happens he did it, did it through sports here. And it took me a while to figure that out. You know, I was still all about myself when we started Sports Report. I was still wanted, you know, the glory. And I, when there were billboards up and around town, that was weird. It was and really that, strange. And the full-size Andy Lynch in Meyer. Right. Yeah, that's right. The cardboard That we still don't know what happened to it. Well, that disappeared. Oh. I might have an idea. Uh -huh. yeah, and I didn't take it, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the, I loved it. You know, you're fighting the, the flesh there and you're saying, it's not about me, but I love it. But, you know, so you're basking in that. But God, God shapes you and he changes you. And so I'm getting closer to Jesus and getting closer to caring less about me and the glory that I have unfairly received for just, you know, what's different about me? I'm just passionate. You know, I yeah. just let Jesus work through me and I'm not special. I just, God works. So seven and a half years, I came back to this TV right. station. Right, yeah. You'd been here six and a half years at that point. <laughs> and I can remember being sitting down with Kevin Bowers and he said, hey, I think you should start doing these little productions with Andy Lynch and Mark Koontz, mm -hmm. of which I didn't know either one of you very well. <laughs> I knew nothing about your heart for Christ, nothing at all. I just was trying to be obedient to my boss. And so we started doing ministry related productions and that grew into a TV show and that grew into more ministry things here on the TV station that you were able to do. And I love that because, I, you know, I still had this desire, or it was growing, I guess, to use the station, use whatever resources we had to get the gospel out and to get, you know, life-changing message of Jesus Christ out. There you see Holiday Music Festival, and that looks relatively new. I still have my blue and orange tie there. Yeah, a couple, a couple years old there, a good Syracuse tie. But yeah, yeah, those opportunities I was hungry for to give more intentional time sharing the gospel. We, we'd give faith stories, and I'd go and speak to FCA groups, you know, when I first got mm -hmm. here, or graduations or whatever, and always try and get, you know, the word of God, whether I, I quoted scripture or verse or not, I'd try and get that out there. Um, but this was our chance to really be intentional. And also to help our viewers connect, okay, what we're doing in the sports world, that's a huge ministry. And what we're doing, teaching and preaching, that's a huge ministry too. And they go together. So there's a lot of people who've been asking, what are you doing next? What have you <laughs> been doing? And you're a pastor. You're a pastor, a connections pastor at Kingsway Christian Church. And you know that, that desire didn't just start. You know, you had a desire several years ago yeah. to become a pastor. And you guys at home may not realize we almost lost him several years ago mm -hmm. to a pastor position. But instead, he became the director, area director for FCA. Yeah. And that became your next ministry, um, which seems to me like it just exploded. You already had the connection with the youth. Right. And now you had a strategic, purposeful, daily reason to invest in their lives for Christ. Yeah. And a lot of that started with family. You know, I, I've... I've People joke that I'm a dad to their, their kids because I go to all their games and I, <laughs> I cover them and, and I care about them and I know their sports and their stats. And, and so, you know, 2013 really had that, um, that burning in my heart. How can, be, uh, how can I be a dad to my kids? How can I be a, a, a husband to my wife? I can't keep doing 60, 70 hours a week every day of the week covering sports all the time. And so we really did have this crossroad. And, and it was this option, FCA. Uh, which Kevin Bowers, again, in his foresight, he gives such good, great vision mm -hmm. uh, to keep TV44 going and to look to the future for what God is doing and going to be doing in media and mm -hmm. just everything. He does, he does a phenomenal job looking ahead. Um, and so he came to me and said, why, you know, why don't you keep being on TV44, do the things you love, pick out those mm -hmm. good things and not the things that 
you know, bog you down. Mm -hmm. And do FCA, you know, Dan Allison, who did a great job kind of transitioning, trying to get away from being a full-time teacher to be our FCA rep before I came on. Um, Dan said, I can't keep, you know, I can't raise enough funds for a full-time mm -hmm. spot. And so Kevin said, well, if Andy's part-time, can we get enough for that? And Dan said, well, maybe there's already this chunk. And, and Dan really, if he hadn't been doing the work he was doing, I don't know if I would have said yes to that because I had another church in Galleon, Ohio, uh, that said, come be our pastor, a church of 150, 200 people, you know. And, and I just love, I love shepherding. I love uh, going deeper with people. I love seeing uh, action, you know, in people and their spiritual lives and seeing them want to change and then helping them through that change. I love disciple making, which is so, in American culture, we don't have it. We need more disciple making, not just, not just proclaiming the gospel and having people come to Christ. That's the start. We can't just leave them there. We got, you know, that's just the very beginning of their faith walk. And, and Jesus didn't just leave them there when they came. He said, come and follow me. And take up your cross daily and die to yourself. That's not just pray a prayer and you're done. <laughs> that's a commitment to the rest of our lives. And so I saw that need and I love, you know, walking alongside people. And so I got to do that for five years uh, through FCA. And, and you're right, those relationships that we started because of Sports Report, let us into schools where superintendents were saying, yeah, if Andy's, if Andy's doing it, come on in. You know, I, we had that credibility instantly where across the country, it's harder for FCA groups to get started in schools when they, they hear God and they hear, you know, bringing Bibles into school, even in Indianapolis. I mean, I've talked to some FCA folks already and they've had some pushback about bringing Bibles into school. Mm -hmm. And here it's, it's open because of God, what God had prepared. The, he had tilled the ground, he had gotten the soil ready, and it was ripe for the harvest. And so it was natural that once we asked, you know, he went in. As you and your family makes the official transition, there will undoubtedly be people left here, people who have moved on other places, who will continue to be impacted by the things that you have done and said. And we have a few of those people who have who have shared some oh, wow. things and we'd oh, like boy. to share those with you now. Uh, first, we have Mark Koontz coming to us from BCSN. Nice. He's, uh, he, he's gonna share with you uh, some of the memories he has with you and some of the things he wants to say thank you for. Oh boy. Andy, we have literally spent hundreds, if not thousands of hours together on TV. Usually I was on the left-hand side of the set, but you're always in the driver's seat. You have been the driving force behind Sports Report since day one, and it's because of your hard work that TV44, Sports Report, and WOSN continue to be so impactful in West Central Ohio. But your impact goes much deeper than just scores and highlights, and it's more than just the stories you have told. It's the connections that you have made and the connections others have made through you. Now, my first year, there were many nights I'd be driving through the back roads thinking there was no way I'd make it to my fourth, fifth, or even sixth event, yet somehow I would. And I soon learned to trust the path you had laid out for me and everyone else who was going out to shoot. And that's one of the many lessons I learned from you, trust the path. And like so many of your lessons, it's biblically reinforced and straight from your own life. You've trusted the path the Lord has laid out from you, from Pittsburgh to Syracuse to Texas to Alaska to Ohio and now off to Indiana, as you've explored the last frontier in the 50th state and broke new frontiers in the Buckeye State. Over our 11 years working together, I may have questioned your fashion sense. May that white jacket and red tie Valentine's Day combination never be resurrected again. And I did question your taste in pizza. Banana peppers? Really? Ranch dressing? Come on now. But I never once questioned your heart and your desire to serve the Lord. And it's that servant's heart that has allowed you to follow his wishes from in and out of ministry to in and out of sports casting to this new opportunity in Indianapolis. I'll finish strong with this. You've run the good race in Lima, and as one of the countless people you have bettered, I'll say simply and wholeheartedly, thank you and best wishes as you move on. Wow. Nice words from Mark. It is. It is. Want to say anything? No, I just I got want to see, see another one. <laughs> we'll go on to the next one. Matt Finkel was with us for a few years, and he was a great delight to have here. And he's now in Pennsylvania, and he also has some things to share. Hey, Andy, Matt Finkel here in Hagerstown. I'm sure this is a bittersweet moment for you. Your final show at TV44. Wish I could be there to celebrate with you. 
I'll always owe you and be especially grateful to you for giving me my first shot on air. And what a place to do it in Lima with a wealth of local sports and outstanding communities. You set the standard for local sports coverage. It's one that I think about often and try to emulate here in Maryland. And there's a reason everybody loved you so much throughout West Central Ohio and beyond. Truly one of the nicest, most genuine, caring, helpful, patient, and selfless people I've ever met. I remember my first day at the station very well. We had a meeting in the prayer room, and even though it was in the middle of a polar vortex, and I had never stepped foot in Ohio until two days before, you made me feel welcome, and I felt like I belonged right away. From there, I cherished all of the great times we shared together, whether it be calling games, working side by side at the desk, watching the Reds at Tully's, spending time with Nathan, Anna, and Leah, talking Q's hoops, or pretending we knew how to make food, on Faith and Friends. Congrats on an amazing run at TV44. This is a huge loss for the area, but I know everyone at the station will continue with what you helped build there. Best of luck in your new role. I know you will succeed and continue to have a positive impact on everyone you come across and keep inspiring those around you. Next time I'm in Indiana, I know who my first call will be. Thanks for everything, Andy. Enjoy your last show. Matt was so positive, wasn't he? He, he always had a smile. He, you could literally, you, you asked him to do a store in a dog park once. <laughs> I did. And Matt was like, well, I guess I'm going to Kent. <laughs> but he was always so positive. And Chris Parks, you know, was the same way. He, he never questioned. And that those are the type of people you need when you're starting something, when you're building something, when you're growing something. Uh, you just need those people that, that they trust you, you know, and we, we establish that trust, I guess. Well, speaking of Chris Parks, All right. we've got something <laughs> from him, too. <laughs> well, one day it was bound to happen. Andy leaving the sports report, and it's really hard to believe that day has come. Uh, Andy and the staff at WOSN and TV 44 gave me my first job out of college when I was 22 years old. That was back in the fall of 2007. Got to do a bunch of things for the sports report, commentating games, of course. I got to uh, do our prep profiles, the top five plays of the week. Uh, it was truly a lot of fun being in all those different communities. When I moved to Ohio, it was an adjustment, certainly my first year going from Pittsburgh to a lot of small towns and communities. Tough at first, but Andy and the staff and everyone there made things really feel like home, especially after my first year there. And I got to spend five more years also in Ohio after that. My favorite memories of Andy probably have to be his positive outlook and positive attitude on everyone that he came around, including myself. Uh, there'll be days where we work 50, 60 hours a week trying to get to as many things as we can uh, on the calendar, and uh, especially on Saturdays. There'll be days on Saturday I would come in and work and see my schedule and be like, how on earth am I going to get to 12 different things going from Putnam County to Ogles County? And, uh, points elsewhere just all over the map but um, we did do it uh, editing a bunch of things putting things in the rundown and then putting that show together for 10 o'clock it was a rush it was a thrill and it was a lot of fun to be a part of and uh, that's something I've taken to into my jobs now after I left Ohio here once in Florida and now here in South Carolina is just going the extra mile for those viewers and for everybody in those communities to make sure those kids and everyone gets on those highlights I have been fortunate enough to stay in the sports field now for 12 years. I'm 34 years old working in South Carolina as our sports director anchor at our local CBS here. I've used Andy for a reference both in Florida and now here in South Carolina, and I'm forever grateful for the great things he has said about me, and I'm sure for everyone that has worked at TV44. I'm really forever grateful for him for giving me a chance at 22 years old straight out of college and giving me my first job in the sports field. Andy and his family are fantastic. I'm forever grateful for all the things they have done and I know Andy's going to leave a lasting impact on everyone that he touches and gets to interact with in his next move. So congratulations Andy. I know TV44, WOSN and everyone there is certainly going to miss you. Chris talks about those long hours and I remember Saturday nights we would anchor before Buckeye Insider. Mark was frantically had just gotten back from whatever game he'd gone to sometimes on the road with the Buckeyes other times from Columbus and so Chris and I would be doing sports report 10 to 10.30 and then Buckeye Insider would follow. And we were so tired from the week. We were slap happy. <laughs> and my son's sitting right over there. When he gets slap happy, we tell him and he laughs more. And you know, you know how you are when you're slap happy. That's what happens. And, but it was, there were some of the most fun shows because Chris and I would just be going, it was like comedy hour for a half hour, doing all these different highlights. And, and he was just so much fun to work with. A kindred spirit. He's a Pittsburgh guy. We always like Pittsburgh guys. Wayne Getz, our director, is a Pittsburgh guy. <laughs> And we're always trying to hire Pittsburgh and Syracuse people. Uh, <laughs> that's my influence on the station. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, that is not in our hiring. <laughs> just, just so anybody who like is worried about us having a you a know, bias. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm from Iowa. Other direction. <laughs> I didn't hire you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess that's true. You're right. <laughs> but you know what? You gave me an opportunity to do things that I never thought I would do again. Because originally my plan was to be a sports broadcaster. Yeah. And the news is what was available. So I took that and I went with it. And then I came here seven and a half years ago and you needed a shooter. Yeah. And so you put me out on the football field and right. you put me on the basketball court. And I remember standing there, just like you talk about God reminding you of that dream that you had put mm. in his heart. I can remember standing there on that mm. football field going, thanks to Andy Lynch mm. trusting me to do this, because I messed up the first few times. <laughs> I did a bad job. Um, now, now God is fulfilling that. Mm. And, and I thank you. I thank you for doing that. You're welcome. Um, it's good. Well, we have, um, uh, we have one more video Actually, two more videos to quickly show oh, you. Man. And, I don't know uh, if I can make it through And this. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're quickly running out of time. We could like, do a multi-part series on, <laughs> on Andy's 13 years here. But uh, let's, let's, let's go to Andy Schaefer. Coach Andy mm. Schaefer wanted to share some thoughts. Awesome. Andy Schaefer, Columbus Grove, head football coach. Uh, the thing that I'm really going to miss the most about Andy Litch is just the way that he really cared about other people. Um, he put other people first. And I really think uh, the thing that really stood out to me was the way that he cared about coaches' wives. He made it part of his mission to not only care for the coach, but he understood a big part of the coach is, is his wife. And uh, so he, he set up things like coaches' date nights. Um, we also did a Bible study with uh, Coach Summers and, and our wives and, and just understood how important it is to just keep your family first. Um, in your marriage uh, while being a coach that's a very stressful job. So I appreciate Andy Lynch reaching out to me um, and really pouring into my life and he's certainly going to be missed in this area. What a great guy, Andy Schaefer. Mm -hmm. uh, he was our John Reed Leadership Award winner this year and uh, just getting to know his family uh, has been really special, how missional he is living and, and how that was, that was one of my joys, coming alongside coaches like him. 50 different coaches I meet with on a monthly basis and just you know, that they're, in, they're inspiring to their students. How can we pour into them? How can we inspire them and encourage them? And, and those relationships will last for me. And finally, let's hear from another relationship that I know is going to last for you from Pastor Doug Boquist. Andy Lynch. I don't know anybody like Andy Lynch. I can't tell you how much I love you, Andy, how much I appreciate you. Um, your humility is... Um, it's 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 without um, another example. You have always found what needs to be done and just got to it and just got to work. Uh, your ability to work, for that matter, is phenomenal. You you just get things done. Um, you network. You love people. Um, we are going to miss you. We have missed you and will continue to do so. I, I, I know that you're going to do great things in Indianapolis. I, I know that. I know that church is blessed to have you. Um, we're blessed that you were with us as long as you were. And uh, we continue to pray for you. We miss you. Uh, you're part of us. We love you. We'll see you. There's lots of great churches in our area, uh, but we certainly found a home at Lima Community the last four or five years. And uh, the way Doug loves people, you know, he, when he's when he's talking, I feel like he's talking about himself, not me, because uh, he is humble, he is he is loving, and he loves people. And so uh, he certainly was a huge encourager uh, to me and to our family the last three four years of our, our time here. So in 13 years' time, and you can look back, you know, your family has been, you know, your family was or, ordained and built before you walked in here, mm. but it has grown so much. How has your family grown? Mm through being here, through the changes, through sensing God calling you, what have you seen? Yeah, it's awesome to see our kids grow up and to see my wife uh, mature, just like I've matured. Um, we, we, yeah, I, I don't know what it will be like without this place for us. Uh, for my son, he's been with me most Friday nights the last year, and that'll be hard. <laughs> because we've had fun. You have impacted so many counties, so many people, so many individuals. Um, 
When I think of the number of high school students, I found an antic that she'd done back in like 2008. <laughs> A lipstick student interviewed you. Right. That student is now married. <laughs> you know, I found him on Facebook. I was able to tag him and get in there. He has moved on in his life, but the impact is still there. Um, and yet, the impact that God has in your life is growing as well. Um, I can recall my dad, who's a pastor, mm -hmm. used to always tell me over and over again that God has impact certain skills into each one of his children mm. and he knows where he needs those people to be and it may look like this is the spot for you to stay forever because you are shining and it's great but then God can say you know Andy Lynch and the Lynch family I know that I need you here because you got some tasks I mm. got some tasks that need to be done so as you sense that call mm. and you see where things are going what excitement can you see as you look forward to how God is and will continue to use your family now at Kingsway Christian Church. We, we've always been open to whatever he wants. You know, the first year sports report, I didn't know if we'd come back. Personally, you know, will, will the station keep me? <laughs> uh, also, will the, will the show go on? Is this sustainable over a long period of time? All the resources we're pouring into covering these schools in 2005 with all the mileage on the cars and all the car accidents that I, I was in over the years, you know, being a terrible driver. There was a period of time that he couldn't drive the station cars, uh, I think, for insurance purposes. I was so, but we won't talk about that anymore. So irresponsible, He's but I'm better. Much better now. I'm better now, I hope. I've, <laughs> I've, I've learned. But and then there'd be a, you know, a series of three, four years, and, and we'd tell Kevin, uh, my boss, that, that you know, we're looking, and, and we'll see what God has. And we were mm -hmm. always open to that. Um, about a year and a half ago, again, we... We're open, God, if you want us to go. Because I saw myself, I could be here forever. You know, I could stay here and, and, and feel like, yeah, it's hard. And I'm getting older, so it's harder. Uh, the, just the effort, which a lot of people don't understand, don't realize, you know, the effort that goes into putting a TV show together. Right. Uh, just a simple segment like this. There's been so much work that's gone into it by Jennifer and Wayne and uh, I'm sure and countless Nick, others. Nick's Nick. found all that video. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we don't just show up and do a show for a half hour and that's it. You know, yeah. there's so much that goes into it and it's tiring. Um, and so I was open to whatever God, you know, wanted to do. And so a year and a half ago, we, we started praying, God, if you want us to go somewhere, show us. We're, we're open to it. And it wasn't like getting in the fleece, putting the fleece out, and not trusting. We trusted. We just had to hear his voice. We had to stay with him, spend time with him, and hear his voice. And so we did that, and there were several different opportunities that came. Some uh, TV stations that I, should, I was qualified for and I should have gotten hired at, but God didn't want that. Mm -hmm. at bigger places, you know, in, in different places, at warmer places. Ah. We, we did want to go somewhere warmer, <laughs> and we're an hour south. So we're warmer, <laughs> technically, <laughs> but not quite. Uh, but a lot was churches. You know, I had interviews at several different churches, and it just wasn't the right fit. And so for our family, we didn't know, you know, what mm -hmm. was going to happen. Um, but then Kingsway, last summer, um, they had this opening, and it actually started at a different place. And so when God is moving you somewhere, if he's leading you towards something, take every opportunity to, to find that out. Because uh, I went and interviewed at a different church on the east side of Indianapolis for a connections and care pastor job. Hmm. And that was the first time, because I thought, you know, I'm leaving a TV show. You know, pastor Doug says I have humility, but I'm just like anybody else. There's pride there. And, you know, I, I, I believe I want to make a step up. I don't want to you know, move backwards or do less, you know, I'm an American and I want, mm -hmm. I crave that success and goals and all that stuff. And so I didn't, I thought I had to pastor a church. I thought I'd take over a church for, to be satisfied, um, fulfilled and to actually be working out my purpose. Uh, but this church for this care and connections position, which was, you know, second or third in command at this church of a thousand people, I fell in love with that position that I could connect people to God. It's what I've been doing for years is just connecting people to God. And I love that. And I can care for people. You know, I don't have biblical training other than when I read the Bible, you know, and the Holy Spirit imparts things to me. Um, I don't have seminary or Bible college, but I can do this. And then I didn't get the job. I did an interview. It was short, so I figured I'm not getting it. And I didn't. But then Leah said, Kingsway, this church just north of where she grew up in Mooresville, Indiana, outside of Indianapolis, had a connections position. And I said, oh, well, let's apply. And she said, you know, I told you about this about a month ago. <laughs> and you said no. And, and God's timing is always mm -hmm. perfect. And so I applied and went there. And it's, it's the church is, is us. It's our DNA. It's people that uh, don't have much of an ego and just want to serve the Lord and reach the community. Uh, it's a chance 
for my kids to go to school there and to be around cousins and aunts mm -hmm. and uncles, which we love about West Central and Northwest Ohio's families. We, mm -hmm. we, we love that you get to go out together on Sundays after church and have dinner together. And there's cousins and, you, you know, on the same basketball mm -hmm. team. Some of our favorite mm -hmm. stories were siblings playing yeah. together and twins. And we've never had that as a family. And so the chance for our kids to, to grow up with that. And then for my wife, just that she works at the church now too and to have a ministry of her own that it is not overshadowed by me um, has been so beautiful. And so for, for a while, we were, we were just praying, God, show us the pathway, show us the highway. Our, our prayer was pave that super highway mm -hmm. so that it is so clear that we need to go there. And today, on my last day at the station, in my Bible reading was Isaiah 49. And verse 11 says, I will, I will make my mountains. Sorry. I will make my mountains into level paths for them. The highways will be raised above the valley. God always answers. His timing is always perfect. That doesn't mean transition is easy. It doesn't. It doesn't. That doesn't mean and that separation and change yeah. comes smoothly. And we'll miss this place so much. But yet, yeah. it's God's highway. Right. It's kind of been Highway 70 for a is that it what you been, take? It has been Highway 70 He's been for driving every back Friday. and forth <laughs> for months now. Yeah. But yes, it's God's highway. It is. Hey, let's pull. It's, your kids are over here. I don't know if your wife wants to come in here or not. Come I on, guys. This is not planned. But if we can get anybody who wants to come up here, I just want to close and pray for the Lynch family. And you at home can join me as we do this. <laughs> okay. uh, and uh, we know that the seeds that they have planted are still growing and will continue to grow. And we just want to officially send them off with the Lord's blessing. And they've all worked here as well. Yeah. They, that's Let's right. They've all it. worked here. <laughs> Our running joke has been that once Nathan was about six, we wanted to hire him because he was really good on running the camera. <laughs> but, you know, there's some legal rules on that, and we couldn't quite make that official. I was good. You were good. <laughs> she was good. You know, she took my place on some predictions one week, and I thought I had no... I had, <laughs> there was no reason for me to come back, you know. But we've seen the, the love of the Lord through everybody here. And that's the one of the things we love about um, what, how we have been blessed and how you have been blessed with the Lynch family here is how God has worked through every single one. And so we'll just close with a prayer. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you have lent us the Lynch family for the past 13 years that Northwest Ohio is now better because of their presence here and their willingness to work for you. Um, we thank you that you use things like sports, sports which can be considered a God, small g God. But then you looked at that sports and you said, no, I'm gonna use that as a tool and that's gonna be the opening door to get this family here to do things for, for, for me, for Christ. And so Lord, we now just uh, we ask for a, an extra blessing for them as they officially make their transition to Indiana complete and that you would uh, continue to open the right doors for them and that you would guide them and direct them. We continue to thank you, Lord, for the seeds that have been planted and how they'll continue to harvest right here in Northwest Ohio. Thanks to them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. We love you, Northwest Ohio, and we're on social media, <laughs> so we're not going anywhere. <laughs> We sure are thankful for the Lynch family, appreciate their ministry, and ask you to join us in prayer for them as they make this transition. Now don't go away, Andy has one more thing to share with you all before he officially signs off a final time. But in the meantime, let's do a few things that Andy Lynch has helped us do many times. Laugh and smile. Here's a look back to some of Andy's famous Andy's antics. A strong senior class leads this year's Wildcat volleyball team, and they had a glimpse of what their season may hold this past summer. We had a tournament actually in Maumee, and we went farther than sh this year than we've ever gone before, so I'm really excited for this year. It'll be fun. Well, I think it just added like a lot of spirit to our team, and we're really excited about the season now. Um, we added some freshmen and um, some sophomores to the team, so I think it just brought us together more. I think we're really prepared, and we did great at Mommy, so I think we'll come out really going strong and hopefully take it a long way. I'm so pumped. Um, I can't believe we're seniors already, and we've worked so hard this year already, and we've been, done two-a-days, and we've never worked this hard before, and I'm really excited. Working harder than ever, as this is the first year the volleyball teams participated in two-a-days. Last year we had conditioning and the girls came in and worked hard, but it was tough because we would do an hour of conditioning and then an hour of open gym. 
Um, so this year we did conditioning in the morning, open gym at night. The girls came in, we worked hard every day in conditioning, definitely pushed them harder than any year in the past. Um, but we have a really good group of seniors who they obviously know that a good work, work ethic is going to take them far. So they've been really encouraging to the younger girls, you know, and um, it's been a great week for them just to spend time together and bond as a team as well. It's been really tough, but you know, it's a really great atmosphere because we're all in the gym working hard together. And when we go run outside, we'll see the football team conditioning. We'll run past the boys cross country team, the girls cross country teams in here with us conditioning. So it's just a really great atmosphere, which even though it's tough, I think we all enjoy coming in here and working hard. The Lady Cats saved three activities for me, and they all have a certain favorite. Hmm, I would have to say the agility ladder. <laughs> Why do you like that? I don't know, it's just fun to do, find new drills to do, and it really helps with your footwork. So do you kind of come up with new steps each day? Or? Yeah, we kind of just make stuff up sometimes, and it works. <laughs> My personal favorite, the traditional blocking drill. You did good. I think you did pretty good. Honestly? Yeah, honestly. On your blocking, that was nice. I hit the net once. That's okay. I hit the net, so that's okay. Lady Cat saving the best for last, running and cartwheeling. Sometimes in volleyball when you dive and then you kind of get a little disoriented and then you have to really quick find the ball back again. And so that's what this is, is like when you're like out of proportion or like kind of lost and then you have to get up quick, find the ball and like ex be explosive. It's just like totally different than anything else and it actually helps but it's fun at the same time. <laughs> I think you guys should do that like before games, get the crowd revved up. In our warm-up, yeah. we'll add it. And they hope to add on to last year's double-digit win total. We'll get a good early season test September 4th in the Layman Catholic Invitational. Playing noodle hockey in Minster, Andy Lynch for the Sports Report. <laughs> that was my first try through the six bricks. We made it halfway. Then switched to try breaking them with my forearm. A little harder and it showed, didn't go quite as well. Third time's the charm as I finished off the pile. Power team breaks bricks not only with their arms, but with their head. They snap baseball bats, they rip phone books in half. Also, the kids will listen to a positive message. They're an attention getter. You know, when you bring a guy in, like we have the freight train here this week, and you see a guy snap a bat or bend steel or blow up a hot water bottle or tear a phone book, immediately it gets your attention. You're going to kind of be like, okay, well, what's this guy got to say? And it kind of opens up a door for you to be able to speak to these young people because, you know, for somebody who's been there and done it, yeah, we're saying some of the same things that probably their parents or teachers have told them, but coming from an athlete or somebody who they know that they've probably seen on TV or something, and they respect you for what you can do in your field. And the power team makes the most of their time in an area doing school assemblies during the day, then hosting longer programs this week at Ebenezer Mennonite Church in Bluffton. School assemblies, we're definitely here to motivate the kids and encourage them. We really want them inspired to do something great because if you look at the numbers where our teenagers are today, they're not good with alcohol and drug abuse and different stuff like that, teen dropouts. You know, that's our goal is to change those numbers. But in turn, our nighttime program, we want as many people there as possible because we get to preach the gospel. We get to share our, our testimonies and how God made a difference in our life and how he wants to make a difference in your life. You know, you can have a lot of great things, but the most important thing in your life is truly a relationship with God. And you can catch the power team any night at 7 between now and Sunday up in Bluffton. It's a free show that you don't want to miss. And Corey Ross and Andy Lynch for the Sports Report. Oh. Shawnee grad Ryan Downard has signed on with the Green Bay franchise of the Arena Football League where he'll play wide receiver this upcoming season. Really excited. Um, the opportunity to you know keep climbing the ladder and uh, keep playing football and uh, you know it's a different game than the outdoor game but we'll get used to it and uh, you know I'm happy to be back on the offensive side of the ball. I do love playing defense and the contact over there but you know, I want to bring that uh, physical element to the offensive side of the ball, too. Down, Ertl head north in February. Meanwhile, Elida grad Dakota Bechtold hopes to play in college next fall after training hard at fast this year. I've been getting a lot stronger than, uh, than I would have on my own. I mean, um, the nutrition plan they've given me has helped me out a lot. I put on weight. Um, my 40s come down drastically, and that's going to help me um, in my future when I go to college and try to walk on somewhere, get interviews with coaches. They like to see those quick times and high bench press. It's great. Um, there's nothing else like it that I've seen so far. Um, you just have great trainers here and they know what they're doing. I mean, they um, they can just help you out with whatever you need. I mean, any sport, um, 
and I mean they help you out a lot. I mean it's it's a great great facility. Today Bechtel now with a lift to Thon. He had no trouble getting reps at 225. I can move the bar and a little bit of weight, but not quite this much without a little bit of help. Then over on the turf, Downard putting on a clinic, running routes against me. Then allowing me to take some time against the former Eastern Michigan DB. I've covered some offensive guards about your size, but that's about it. That screen pass, I think we had you. I think you did too. I thought you were going for the double pass. Then you went for the over the head, which was a nice move. And, uh, I teach you that, right? Yeah, yeah. I have to say I might have hit you there if we were in pads. <laughs> Maybe. More fun from fast in the weeks to come. Oh. Fort Shawnee, Andy Lynch for the Sports Report. <laughs> Alyssa Winter has started on the Marion local volleyball team since her freshman year, so in three seasons, she has three state championships. I can't believe I'm already a senior. Um, it's been an awesome three years before this. We've had so much success, it's been so fun. Winner's not the only one with plenty of state experience. These seven seniors bring a lot of experience to this team this year. We have several of them that were on the team as sophomores with the state championship that we won in 2008. Five of them started that year, and then last year all those girls started again. So they've been on two state championship teams. Alyssa Winter's been on three, so we're, we've been bringing back we're bringing back a lot of experience to the table. It's been awesome. It really teaches you a lot of like dedication and stuff just to show you how hard you have to work at it to really be successful. Since sixth grade and on, I've been playing with these girls, so I know them all so well. It'd be weird not having them around. I mean, it gets crazy, but I think we have good leaders this year, so I think this season will be a good season. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to, being a senior, we're going to try to be leaders for our underclassmen and Hope to do our best we can. It's been very successful and I hope that we can keep being successful. It's been really fun. It's been a lot of fun, always usually going really, really far. And I don't know, it's just a good time. Everyone has their own part. and I think we all bring something else to the table. So it's really good to bring us all together and I think we'll do pretty good this year, hopefully. It's awesome to be a part of a successful team and it's really rewarding. The Flyers taking me through a couple of drills, starting with the block and spike out of the middle. Then I got a little break, setting up those powerful hitters on the outside. Despite three straight state titles, Amy Steininger keeps the focus simple. We really just take it one practice, one game at a time. It, it sounds like a cliche, but we never talk about you know, our goals. We don't write them down or hang them up in the locker room. We just focus on getting better you know, every practice, and that's what we're focusing on again this year with these girls. Quest for a fourth straight championship begins Saturday as the local girls come to Shawnee for a tri-match with both the Indians and Vandalia Butler. The Mary Local, Andy Lynch for the Sports Report. Yeah! Last night marked the first time Nathan Andres Lynch slept in his own crib here in Ohio. The day before, both Ohio and Indiana had finished the paperwork to clear him to cross the state lines. This marked the conclusion of a one-year journey for me and my wife, Leah, as we had decided to adopt back in December of 2008. This past May, our first adoption match fell through as the birth mother from Texas decided to keep her child. Looking back now, we see how God worked through that situation to prepare us for Nathan and how grateful we are that he brought this little guy into our lives. Nathan will have lots of choices to make as his two grandpas went to North Carolina and Purdue, respectively. His dad, of course, an Orangeman, and we know ultimately he'll probably end up a Buckeye. His mom roots for the Colts, his dad's a Steelers fan, so lots of choices, but we're excited to share this blessing with you these years to come. We'll have a celebration party Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Harvest Baptist Church in Wapakoneta, just across from the high school. All are welcome to attend and come out and meet little Nathan Andres Lynch. Most of all, we want to say thanks for your prayers and support over the last year. We feel blessed by the whole process and by this community that's helped us bring Nathan home. It was a very good Friday for the Lynch family. April 22nd, Anna Grace was born, and it was a short journey getting us to that day. Just 10 days prior to her birth, we got the call from our adoption agency saying we'd been matched with Anna's birth mom. We hurried to get the house ready, and we're off to Indiana just a week later. We didn't actually get to meet Anna till the next day, but by dinner time Saturday night, papers had been signed and she was called ours. Anna could be a volleyball or basketball player in the making. She was 22 inches long at birth, 9 pounds, 7 ounces, 
and she gained weight her first week of life. Her older brother Nathan's trying to adjust to life with a sister, as are we, but we're thankful for God's provision and wisdom and for your prayers along this journey. Seems like every way you turn at a Minster track meet, there's Wildcats scoring points. In every event, we have people that are very good, and just to be part of it, all the girls and our coaches are very nice, and it's just really awesome. And that's the case in the pole vault, where senior Sarah Hillsman and sophomore Kayla Webker have been neck and neck at the top of leaderboards all spring. Webker's PR coming this year at 11 feet, Hillsman's 10-4 at state last year. It's definitely nice, because if we need help working, she can watch me and tell me what I'm doing wrong, and I can watch her and tell her what we're doing wrong and we both push each other to go higher. She helps me every time I know, like if I feel like my steps are wrong, she's there to help me to get better and be on step. Both ladies coming off a winter season where they went to state in basketball, and for Hillsman, it was the second time competing in Columbus Grand Stage after placing fifth in the pole vault last year. It was so much fun to get all the way to state last year. It was, it was amazing being in the stands or being down there and having everyone in the stands watching us was awesome. Hillsman's dad got her into pole vaulting since he was a vaulter in high school and he serves as one of their coaches. He comes to all of our meets and helps me and Kayla get our steps down and looks up drills on the internet and stuff for us to do. Just before my first attempt, Webker told me a fond vaulting memory. Last year before Memorial, I fell back and got a concussion. It was very scary whenever I came back because yeah, I didn't want to go and do it again and get hurt again. So with concussions in mind, I took my approach. And after a few tries without a bar, they put a bungee up and told me to kick it. So I kicked it twice, but didn't get over. Maybe I'll need to get some of those drills they were talking about from the internet. In Minster, Andy Lynch for the Sports Report. And the show must go on, but for Andy Lynch, mm. this is it. 13 years here at WTLW. Mm. WOS and someone asked on Facebook Live, how many sports reports do you think you've done over the? I've been to years? ten thousand events, so I don't know <laughs> how many that is. But these guys are going to carry carry the torch. They're going to do a great job. So keep watching. Uh, it's been fun. It's been fun. Andy, you've done a terrific job. I Thank know you. that one of the reasons that I am back here after being on the road doing play by play and different things <laughs> is uh, is because of you. Is because of kind of what you've set the standard that you have created here at the TV station and I'm honored to, to kind of pick up that torch and run with it. So Thank we you. owe a huge Thank debt you. of gratitude to you for what you've done and for what you've inspired everyone around here to do. It's not, you know, it's not just us at the desk. There are a ton of people that work behind the scenes very hard, very tirelessly to make this happen. And uh, it is also all, all to them. But uh, yeah. Andy, we thank you so much. And the show is yours from here on out. So we're going to midnight, folks. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. The last 13 and a half years have been the best, and they've been the hardest. The most grueling, the most joyful. I've got a minute and a half not to cry, but I'm going to. Everyone here at TV44 works really, really hard. It's hard to understand what they do, uh, but it's awesome. It's, we do it because we love you. We love, we love it. We love the sports. We love sharing God with you. In Lima, I've gotten married. I brought two amazing kids into our family. I couldn't have done this without them. Couldn't have done it without my, oh, my family. And I've gotten to know so many of you personally. I've had the pleasure of sharing the love of Jesus at events, on the radio, in the newspaper, and here at this amazing little station in Northwest Ohio that's done so many amazing things for many, many years and will continue to do so because God's hand is all over it. So my final words, I want to be clear. Any good that you have seen in me hasn't been me at all. It's been Jesus and the hope and the joy and the peace and the love that he produces in me, he wants to produce in you. It can be yours. All you have to do is accept it, follow him. You can do it tonight. You can, you can remember this last show of mine is the start of your journey right now. And then tell somebody, tell me, tell anybody. If you don't know what to say, I'll help. I know Patrick will help, Frank will help, Jennifer, any of us, we are here for you. I'll still be on social media. I'm always just a click away. Thank you, my friends. I love you. And God loves you. Thank you for taking this journey with us. My Good family's night. coming up. They want to say goodbye as well. Nathan's been here as much as anybody. Love you guys. Thanks for being here. Good night. <laughs>